गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी हैव मिस्टर विशाल प्रजापति टू डिलीवर द वेबिनार ऑन रिफाइनरी एंड पेट्रोकेमिकल्स इंडस्ट्री चैलेंजेस एंड अपॉर्चुनिटी विदाउट टेकिंग मच टाइम आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग मिस्टर विशाल प्रजापति टू कंटिन्यू द सेशन प्लीज सर ओके थैंक यू Uh, I will take over. Can you just uh, mute your microphone so that everybody can listen clearly? So first of all, good morning, everybody, all the students, professors, and all my friends. First of all, I would like to thank uh, RNG Patel Institute of Technology to invite me for this uh, presentation, and the students and professors as well uh, who are joining this event, and of course moderator who has uh, facilitated uh, for this nice presentation. so uh, first of all uh, i will tell everybody uh, this is presentation only for awareness i mean this is not a technical presentation wherein i am imparting some knowledge or there is some study or there is some exam involved so this is only a presentation for awareness for all the people who are not working in the industry but yet they need to understand the industry so uh, we'll touch upon some of the basics of oil and gas industry rather refiner and petrochemical which is a subset of oil and gas uh we'll be taking the overview part then uh, we'll go ahead with the crude basics the crude which is the main important component in this industry we'll see the types of crudes we will see the crude market how it works we will see the refinery how the refinery works what is being done in the refinery how the different uh, units of the refinery works what processes are involved and what the products uh, produce what are the products uh, what are the challenges in the refinery and petrochemicals like there are various challenges with respect to the operation of the refinery with respect to the economic with respect to the technical so in this particular aspect we will see the different kind of case studies that i have involved uh, i have incorporated as part of my presentation of course uh, we'll have two videos somewhere two animation videos if it works fine we'll try to see those videos what are the different kind of equipments in the refinery i have noted down few uh inspection the part which is i am dealing with mainly and uh, after that we'll see uh, the opportunities of course as i know uh, there are students uh, who are uh, in the different years of the graduations and some of them are about to be or let's say are going to be engineer and going to pursue their career so there are various uh, opportunities with respect to their career so that i have involved as a brief and uh, there are some certifications the professional certifications which will be useful in the coming days for them now the overall presentation consists of 45 slides and mostly the images are there 45 slides total including the end and start slide and mostly i have uh, added images only to make it more interesting and not boring for you people because you people are Uh, entire day, uh, as I understand, uh, going through the technical uh, presentations with a lot of detail. So this presentation will try to make it interesting. Uh, one thing I would like to announce here uh, that while presenting this topic here, I have not used any company data, and I have also not done any breaching of the any of the company policies. So this is purely the uh, general industry information. the experience and uh, whatever uh, uh, news we have with respect to the failure of the overall industries that i have included here okay so i will start now with a brief introduction of myself vishal prajapati uh, i have done my graduation bachelor of engineering in mechanical from svnit surat now it is nit surat also called and uh, i have the inspection engineering experience for the refineries and petrochemicals uh, of over 14 plus years uh, and mainly i am dealing with the static equipments 
I'm involved with the integrity assessment and the life cycle uh, analysis of the static equipments. So that is uh, on my part, the brief introduction. And we'll start with the first slide, which is a very important, very interesting slide. Now this slide will tell you about the historical timelines of the crude. I mean, crude we know today, but the crude has started it's uh, showing its impact lay, way back in 3000 BC. In those years, the ancient Middle Eastern countries like Egypt and uh, this Iran and all, they were using these crudes for building uh, the building, uh, uh, the houses, the roads, as well as a simple example, they were using it for this, their boats for the leakage uh, arresting because it was thick those days. Then after that, crudes had started evolved from the ground on its own and, you know, people have started realizing. But the first commercial discovery was made in USA, which was a big uh, discovery. And they happened to, you know, bank on those discovery to make it further the oil industry. Before that, oil was there, but nobody realized its use and the amount of oil which can be used for the betterment of the economy of the country. After that, this is a very nice picture back in 1908, where, is, where the Middle Eastern countries, they started uh, feeling the importance of the crude. And they knew that their country, which is under so much of poverty and almost no resources, but they have a very important resource called, in those days, black gold, which is a crude. So this picture shows that how using the gushers, they started uh, doing the exploration of the crude. The next timeline is again very important timeline, 1944, which is a post-World War II. Now, already one World War, 19, I think 1914, was fought. People have realized the need of the energy. And after 44, people have realized the importance of the crude. So after that, the other wars or let's say Cold War started on the uh, gaining the control of these crude resources. Nin after 1944, the mo more modern weapons and ships and all started and people have focused their uh, attention on the uh, ga gaining the uh, gaining the uh, this source of the crudes. So different countries then uh, different wars have been started. The famous uh, Suez Canal blockade. Uh, this is, if you people are aware about this, this is in Egypt, the Suez Canal, which is a bridge between the Western countries and the Middle Eastern and the Asian countries. This particular place is very important with respect to the trade of almost all kind of commodities like crude or uh, other commodities also, important co commodities also. So uh, there was a dispute between the Western countries and the Middle Eastern countries because by this time Middle Eastern knew the importance of the crude and the Western countries wanted to, uh, you know, uh, take control of these resources, take control of these countries. So there was a dispute between these two countries and in re retaliation to that, uh, these people have stopped the, uh, this important canal. And in 1960, the OPEC was formed. OPEC is nothing but organism of petroleum exporting countries, mainly consisting of the Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, Iran, Iraq, Venezuela, Kuwait. So uh, OPEC no formation organization site ma thayu, AJ thayu a ena mate ke crude no price control karwa mate. Karan ke Western countries je no dominance hatu, so they wanted to take that dominance back. And after this, uh, you can you might have seen the development is in these Middle Eastern countries like Saudi, UAE, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, all these countries have flourished like anything. Uh, 1973, there was oil embargo, there was again dispute between the Middle Eastern countries and the Western countries about supply of this uh, crude oil. So they stopped supply, they stopped production, and there was a demand supply gap, and there was a huge price increase in the crude. And in uh, Europe and USA, people were not having the petrol and all. 
for their everyday use for the home heating and cooling also they were not having those things so that that was a famous timeline uh, 1990s uh, so this was something in kuwait which iraq military has done there was a dispute between iraq and kuwait with respect to the territory uh, of the of the respective countries and with respect to the uh, crude resources so iraq invaded in kuwait in 1990 saddam hussein if you know uh, in that uh, almost after five to six months there was a collision uh, military by uh, usa germany uh, britain and the middle eastern countries like uh, saudi arabia and kuwait and they fought a war with iraq so that that was a famous gulf war and uh, after that in 2015 this is very recent if we are uh, you know checking the uh, this oil pre prices and uh, or let's say stock market people will be aware about this this is the time before which the price was uh, in three figures like hundred dollars per barrel or hundred and ten dollars per barrel but then immediately after 2015 the price started coming down and it has come it has started coming down and with the recent effect of uh, trade-off between china and us plus uh, trade -off with covid 19 uh, the price has gone to a, such a low level that it has went to the negative that means they are giving money to you to take their food back uh, just for uh, this thing uh, somebody's mic is on can you switch it off so that everybody can listen please okay so moving to the next slide we'll uh, see crude and its formation so how crude was crude uh, what is a crude first of all it is nothing but as a simple it is carbon and hydrogen see the power of carbon and hydrogen it is giving a lot of energy but then there will be some impurities also how it is formed at a ba very base very basic stage uh, very basic steps there are only three stages if you understand it uh, easy way uh, the animals and the plants which were living millions of years before uh, they died they went under the uh, ocean before doing that they took a lot of energy from sun and they have converted those energy into the carbon molecules and then years and years after later on the sediments and these plants have generated the bacteria in the stage two uh, the heat and pressure effect come uh, into attack and uh, it has begun rising and so it has been converted in the crude and natural gas okay uh, at some places maybe we will be writing oil only uh, now onwards so make it uh, understand it as a crude so it it has been converted into crude or natural gas depending on the pressure and temperature so if the pressure and temperature is more it has converted into the lighters which is a natural gas and if it is less it, it, it has remained in the crude and third stage is nothing but the crude has been already generated it has moved it has traveled or let's say migrated to the uh, rocks different kind of rocks and it got trapped in it and later on we the humankind is about to explore it so the overview of the industry says that almost how it is affected to us you know uh, the everyday use daily need roj baroj nu je jeevan che ema 60 percent je faalo je it is of this crude oil of this oil and gas of this refinery and petrochemicals and it is from coal, nuclear, hydroelectric and other renewables, solar, wind. But still, the de facto leader, the leader of energy is crude. So, every day we have a lot of commodities. And for your information, we have a lot of agencies so that is a very basic example of uh, this industry product which we were using so kerosene was a very important uh, commodity and uh, of course as say we are using lpg uh, which is also the product of this industry only the electricity power generation 
in what we travel, our bike, car, bus, train, everything, and uh, fertilizers, fabrics, which we use for the synthetic rubber and toys, toys, all these things are nothing but the product of uh, crude only, this industry only. So the car, the plane, which is using aviation turbine fuel, uh, the other products as well, uh, which is used also the same derived from the crude only so each and every aspect of the global economy not only india or us or any other not on not only one city or one village it is affecting everything so oil and gas industry is very important uh, economic point of view and business point of view commerce point of view so uh, the large quantity of oil every day and every single second it travels from one country to another country the exporting country mainly mainly middle east and all us also it is a biggest exporter now uh, and uh, the importing are the again america europe and asia asia when we say a lot of asian countries like india china pakistan singapore if you go far east is philippines and then australia also china everybody these people are not having too much of oil. So they have to depend heavily on either US or this uh, African and Middle Eastern countries. And this uh, particular crude trade is creating a political and economic agenda as well. Uh, you might have seen some news comes and this prices of the crude changes changing very fast. It is of also a national security concern. You might have seen some of the refineries and petrochemicals they are guarded heavily with uh, CISF in, if, if you talk about in India. And also it is same uh, in other countries also because if your refinery is not working, if, if, if it stops working, then there will be stopped energy flow. There will be issues. Your milk will not be delivered. Your vegetables will not be delivered. You will not be able to go anywhere because, because there is no uh, gasoline. There is no petrol. There is no diesel. Many times you have felt, felt this uh, when uh, there are strikes and all. So the same situation will arise. Now this slide talks about <clears throat> the inter-regional uh, crude oil flows. Uh, I have written some of the country's name and some of the crude names also given. So you can see in Asia, Asia there are a lot of inputs. You have to buy a lot of crude from different part of the world. There are may, very few resources in the Asian countries. Uh, Russian and this uh, Africa, US, Middle East, they are having a lot of crores. There are some names like Maya, Brent, Mesa, Arab Light, Kuwait, Iranian, Dubai, Oman, Ural. So the crude names are also there, Bonin, Light. Uh, now crude oil market, how it works. So since the oil is a most important part of the energy, it affects the economic growth of almost every country. The values of the crude is driven by the demand and supply and the availability of the spare. The demand and supply we can easily understand. Matlab crude demand vadhare che, pan supply ocho che, obviously price vadhwani che. Uh, parantu aavakte aapde important aspect jo corona na samay ma ki availability of the spare Spare storage. Now, US and Abadi country ma mana su thay rujje. Amni paase bo vadu crude available se bo vadu exploration thay rujje. Je amana thiye 10 years pehla je production kartu hato crude uh, US. Ena karta bo vadi rujje. But then inu crude kharidva mathe koi na thi karan ke now at this stage of Corona people are not using vehicles. Many countries are having a severe lockdown, so people are not using the, their cars, the aeroplanes the ships and all so uh, crude no use nahi to pan crude no production to thai che so je storage facilities che e baddi full thava mandi so e baddi full thava mandi to eno matlab crude no use nahi to to indirectly uh, the price of the crude is getting reduced and in such a way in the i think last week of the uh, april or first week of the may the price went negative the future price of the crude went negative that means you buy crude from our side and I will give you some money for that also. But you help us getting this storage facilities empty. 
वेल्यू इज ड्रीवन बाय दी रिफाइंड पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स ऑल्सो लेट्स से हमें अपने एम नक्की करियो कि आपरे कार जैसे बद्दी इलेक्ट्रिक अच चलावानी छे तो पछि पेट्रोल कोई लेसे नहीं तो इनी डिमांड घटी जैसे तो अल्टीमेटली एना कारण है क्रूड नी डिमांड पण घटी जावानी रिफाइनरी नी डिमांड घटी जावानी छे देन जियोपॉलिटिकल सिचुएशंस मतलब एक न्यूज़ आवसे कि चाइना अने यूएस नी वच्चे ट्रेड रिलेटेड कन्फ्लिक्ट थाई छे मीटिंग ओ थाई छे पण सॉल्यूशन आवतो नथी बीजे दिवसे तुम्हारा शेयर मार्केट ही डाउन जैसे अने बीजे दिवसे तुम्हारा क्रूड नी प्राइस ही डाउन जाती रहसे बीजू छे ओपेक डिसीजंस आज ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से पेट्रोलियम एक्सपोर्टिंग कंट्रीज नो એટલે કેવું કે છે કે ભાઈ આપણે પ્રોડક્શન બહુ વધારી દેવું છે ધેટ મીન્સ માર્કેટ માં બહુ ક્રૂડ આવી જશે શું થશે સપ્લાય બહુ વધી જશે ડિમાન્ડ તો એટલી ને એટલી જ રહેવાની છે તો એનાથી પણ યોર ક્રૂડ પ્રાઇસ વિલ ગો ડાઉન ઓકે એન્ડ ધીસ ગ્લોબલ માર્કેટ ઇટ કનેક્ટ્સ બાયર્સ એન્ડ સેલર્સ યુ નો આ જે ગ્લોબલ માર્કેટ છે ક્રૂડ નું બહુ કોમ્પ્લેક્સ છે વર્લ્ડ લેવલે એનું ટ્રેડિંગ થતું હોય છે ઘણા લોકો ક્રૂડ ખરીદી લે છે અને આ જે આ સ્લાઇડ માં તમે જે જોઈ શકો છો રાઈટ હેન્ડ સાઈડ બોટમ સાઈડ આટલી મોટી શિપ હોય છે જે ક્રૂડ કેરી કરીને આવે છે અને પિક્ચર માં નાની દેખાય છે લાંબી પરંતુ એની જે હાઈટ છે મલ્ટી સ્ટોરી બિલ્ડિંગ જે હોય છે એટલી એની હાઈટ હોય છે તો એટલી મોટી શિપ માં એનું ટ્રેડિંગ થતું હોય છે અને ઘણી વખત દરિયાની વચ્ચે એનો પાછું પણ વેચી દેતા હોય છે જો એની અંદર પ્રોફિટ મળતો હોય તો તો આ લેવલે ક્રૂડ ઓઇલ નું માર્કેટિંગ થતું હોય છે देयर आर ફિઝિકલ ઇન્ફ્રાસ્ટ્રક્ચર્સ ઇન્વોલ્વ વિથ ધીસ વન લાઈક સ્ટાર્ટિંગ ફ્રોમ ડ્રિલિંગ રિગ્સ પાઇપલાઇન્સ પોર્ટ્સ ટેન્કર્સ બાર્જીસ ટ્રક્સ એન્ડ एवरीथिंग એન્ડ ક્રૂડ ઇઝ ટ્રેડેડ બેઝિકલી देयर ઇઝ અ બેન્ચમાર્ક પ્રાઇસ મતલબ ઘણા કન્ટ્રીમાં ઘણી જતના ક્રૂડ મળે છે તો પછી એની પ્રાઇસ નક્કી કેવી રીતે કરવી તે લોકો એ બેન્ચમાર્ક ક્રૂડ નક્કી કર્યા છે એરિયા વાઇઝ સો એના બે એક્ઝામ્પલ જે તમે ઘણી વખત ન્યૂઝ માં સાંભળી શકતા હોય એ છે WTI વેસ્ટ ઇન્ટરમીડિયેટ વેસ્ટ ટેક્સાસ ઇન્ટરમીડિયેટ અને બીજું છે બ્રેન્ડ જે કે યુરોપિયન ક્રૂડ છે આ બંને લાઇટ સ્વીટ ક્રૂડ છે અને એના ઉપર ભાવ નક્કી થતા હોય છે રીજન વાઇઝ એન્ડ ધી રાઈટ હેન્ડ સાઈડ તમે રેડ કલરમાં જોઈ શકો છો ઇટ ઇઝ ક્રૂડ ઇટ ઇઝ ટ્રેડેડ ઇન બેરલ્સ જે ભાવ નક્કી થાય છે ઇટ ઇઝ ઇન બેરલ્સ ઇટ ઇઝ નોટ ઇન લીટર્સ અધરવાઇઝ તમે તો લીટર્સ જો રાખીએ આપણે તો પાછળ ઝીરો લગાવીને બહુ લાંબો થઈ જાય છે ફીવર સો દે સો દે હેવ યુ નો મિનિમાઇઝ ધીસ વન they deal in it with barrel and one barrel is 159 liters this is important figure one barrel is 159 liters it is traded in barrels now we'll see exploration exploration is means what you have to take out the crude from the uh, ocean or from the earth from the soil so exploration nowadays it is done at a most challenging places on the earth as well as in most extreme climates like in alaska and everywhere so there are estimates that there there are 100 of billions of barrels of oil which is known today but apart from that there are others which is not known today or which is difficult to explore also so how to know that where the crude is before digging you have to know otherwise you know there is no end to it so the technique is used which is called seismology they use the sound waves they will put the sound waves enter get it entered into the soil or let's say in the ocean and from the eco which is coming back they will come to know uh, whether there is crude oil or not there is a possibility of crude oil or gas is there or not and depending on this one uh, they will decide the drilling once there is a possibility they will drill they will uh, make sure that oil is coming now ek jagya oil nikalyo etle tya pump lagavi don tya thi crude kadhava mato evu nahi thatu કારણ કે તમારે એ પણ એસ્ટાબ્લિશ કરવું પડે છે કે વેધર ધીસ ક્વોન્ટિટી વિચ ઇઝ ફાઉન્ડ ઇઝ કમર્શિયલ ઓર નોટ કમર્શિયલનો મતલબ કે ઘણા મોટા પ્રમાણમાં હોય જેથી કરીને મારે સોના કરતાં ઘણા મણ જેવું ના થાય મોંઘું થાય એવું ના થાય કારણ કે બિકોઝ ઇફ યુ ઇફ યુ આર ડ્રીલિંગ યુ આર ડુઈંગ સિસ્મોલોજી યુ આર ઇન્વોલ્વિંગ સમ કોસ્ટ નાવ એમાં એટલું બધું ક્રૂડ મળતું જ નથી કે જેને વેચીને યુ અન પ્રોફિટ દેન દેર ઇઝ નો યુઝ so once ek jagya mare che crude then you drill several number of uh, you know drills in nearby area and you develop a pool ek moto area nakki karo ke atla mota area ma oil che now it is commercially feasible to tame ne further agal vadharo cho develop karo cho nahi to nakki karta this is example this is showing that uh, uh, there will be onshore drillings and there will be offshore drilling rigs okay the one which is shown on the right hand side is onshore 
જે જમીનની ઉપર ડ્રિલિંગ કરીને તમે ઓઇલ કાઢો છો અને જે બીજું છે એ છે તમારું ઓફ શો જે બાકીના ત્રણ પિક્ચર છે એની અંદર જે રાઇટ હેન્ડ સાઇડ બોટમ જે છે એ ઓએનજીસી બોમ્બેનું છે રિમેમ્બર આપણી પાસે બહુ જ ઓછું એક્સપ્લોરેશન છે આપણે મોસ્ટ ઓફ ધ ક્રૂડ આપણે ઇમ્પોર્ટ કરવું પડે છે એના કારણે આપણે જ્યારે પણ ક્રૂડનો પ્રાઇસ વધી જાય છે એ ઇન્ડિયન ઇકોનોમી માટે બહુ ખરાબ છે આપણા ઇન્ડિયન રૂપીઝની પણ વેલ્યુ તૂટી જાય છે ત્યારે સો ધીસ ઇઝ હાઉ રિફાઇન્ડ પ્રોડક્ટ્સ ફ્લો રિફાઇનરીઝમાં આ બધું ક્રૂડ આવીને એનું જે પણ હોય છે રિફાઇનિંગ થાય છે અને બલ્ક સ્ટોરેજમાં એને લઈ જઈને પછી એને ગેસ સ્ટેશનમાં આપણે એને આગળ વધારતા હોય છે સો ક્રૂડ ઓઇલ દેર આર મેની ડિફરન્ટ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ ક્રૂડ ઓઇલ સો હાઉ ઇટ ઇઝ નો ડિફાઇન્ડ સો દેર આર ક્રૂડ ઓઇલ કેરેક્ટરિસ્ટિક્સ ઇન ટેકનિકલ ટર્મ્સ વી વી સે ઇટ એસે એસે મતલબ નિબંધ યસ એના જેવું છે એસે મતલબ ક્રૂડ ઓઇલને એક નામ આપી દેવાથી નથી થઈ જતું એનો તમારે એક એસે ડિફાઇન કરવો પડે વિચ કન્સિસ્ટ ઓફ ઇટ્સ પ્રોપર્ટીઝ તો મેઇન પ્રોપર્ટીઝ આપણે અહીંયા જોઈશું તો જે મોસ્ટ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ છે એની ડેન્સિટી છે વિચ ઇઝ કોલ્ડ એપીઆઈ ગ્રેવિટી એન્ડ અધર્સ સોરી અધર્સ જે બીજી પ્રોપર્ટીઝ જે છે એની વિસ્કોસિટી છે દેન સલ્ફર કન્ટેન્ટ નાઇટ્રોજન એન્ડ મેટલ કન્ટેન્ટ એન્ડ સેડિમેન્ટ્સ ઓકે ઇન ધીસ સ્લાઇડ વિલ સી સી રાઇટ હેન્ડ સાઈડ યુ કેન સી ઓલમોસ્ટ એવરી ડે એવરી અવર ધી સેમ્પલિંગ ઓફ ધ ક્રૂડ ઓઇલ ઇઝ ડન યુ નો વેન ઇટ ઇઝ રિસીવ ઇન ધ રિફાઇનરી સેમ્પલિંગ ઇઝ ડન સો ક્રૂડ ડેન્સિટી ઇઝ અ વેરી ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ આસ્પેક્ટ ઇટ ઇઝ અ મેઝર ઓફ યોર રિલેટિવ મેઝર ઓફ ધ ક્રૂડ ડેન્સિટી એ એપીઆઈ નંબરથી જણાવવામાં આવે છે ધ મોર એપીઆઈ નંબર ઇટ ઇઝ લાઇટર ક્રૂડ ઓકે એન્ડ વાઇસ અવર્સા એન્ડ હેવીયર ક્રૂડ જે હોય છે ઇટ ઇઝ મોર ડિફિકલ્ટ ટુ પ્રોસેસ એટલે તમને સસ્તામાં મળી આવે છે ધ ઇટ ઇઝ ચીપ ઓકે સેકન્ડ ઇઝ સલ્ફર કન્ટેન્ટ સલ્ફર કન્ટેન્ટ ઇફ ઇટ ઇઝ લેસ દેન પોઈન્ટ ફાઇવ પર્સન્ટ ઇટ ઇઝ કોલ્ડ સ્વીટ ક્રૂડ ઇફ ઇટ ઇઝ મોર દેન પોઈન્ટ ફાઇવ પર્સન્ટ ઇટ ઇઝ કોલ્ડ સાવર ક્રૂડ સો સાવર ક્રૂડ મીન્સ ઇટ્સ નોટ લાઈક ઇટ ઇઝ ટેસ્ટેડ સાવર એનો સ્વાદ એવો છે એટલે એટલા માટે નથી બટ બિકોઝ ઇટ ઇઝ હેવિંગ મોર સલ્ફર ઇટ ઇઝ કોલ્ડ સાવર ક્રૂડ એન્ડ હાઈ સલ્ફર ક્રૂડ્સ રિક્વાયર્ડ એડિશનલ પ્રોસેસિંગ કેમ કારણ કે ઇફ યોર ક્રૂડ ઇઝ ઇટ સેલ્ફ ઇઝ હેવિંગ હાઈ સલ્ફર દેટ મીન્સ યોર પ્રોડક્ટ વિલ ઓલ્સો બી હેવિંગ હાઈ સલ્ફર સો યુ વિલ નોટ બી એબલ ટુ મીટ ધ ગવર્મેન્ટ રેગ્યુલેશન યુ નો આપણા ઇન્ડિયામાં બી એસ ફોર બી એસ ફાઇવ બી એસ સિક્સ બી એસ સિક્સ તમે જોયું હશે તો એ જે છે શું છે તમારી જે ફ્યુઅલ જે તમને પેટ્રોલ કે ડીઝલ મળવું જોઈએ એની અંદર સલ્ફરનું પ્રમાણ આટલું જ હોવું જોઈએ અદરવાઇઝ ઇટ વિલ ક્રિએટ મોર આફ્ટર બર્નિંગ ઇટ વિલ ક્રિએટ મોર સોક્સ એન્ડ નોક્સ અને એના કારણે પોલ્યુશન વધશે સો એના માટે ક્રૂડ કયું તમે યુઝ કરો છો ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ છે દેન ટેન ટેન ઇઝ નથિંગ બટ ટોટલ એસિડ નંબર વિચ ટેલ્સ અબાઉટ એની અંદર કેટલી માત્રામાં એસિડ છે યુ હેવ મોર એસિડ મીન્સ યુ વિલ હેવ મોર ટેન નંબર ઓકે ઇફ એસિડ્સ આર મોર મીન્સ યોર ક્રૂડ વિલ બિકમ હાઈલી કરોઝિવ ઓકે ધીસ ઇઝ ટાઈપ્સ ઓફ ક્રૂડ ઓન ધ બેઝિસ ઓફ વોટ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ પ્રોડક્ટ ઇટ વિલ ગીવ યુ લાઇક ઇફ યુ સ્ટાર્ટ લુકિંગ ફ્રોમ લેફ્ટ હેન્ડ સાઇડ ટુવર્ડ્સ રાઇટ હેન્ડ સાઇડ ધ ડિફરન્ટ ક્રૂડ્સ Uh, are having different product levels okay so if you having uh, you know uh, crude which is tapis crude which is particularly good crude it will have balance 28% uh, heavier products you will have middle distillate products will be 39% and 33% will be the lighter products remember the more you generate lighter products the more profit you will make because the lighter products are having more value in the market okay so now straight away you go on the la- uh, last right hand side uh, maya or bachakero which is having 78% heavy fuel oil so obviously your market value is getting down so you will having a less profit so it is very important how you select your crude you came to know uh, in the previous slide so mainly technical and economical technical uh, crude characteristics you have to see the product characteristics suppose now your government says baba we need lpg more we need uh, gasoline more now uh, our uh, you know minister dharmendra pradhan will say now after lockdown we are starting back the flights we are doing this repatriation also we need aviation turbine fuel uh, fuel so make more aviation turbine fuel right so you have more demand in the market for that 
so you have to run your uh, refinery like that so in order to run that you have to choose your crude in that fashion only then refinery hardware constraints you know your your refinery may be very old which is not able to uh, process high high sulfur crude or heavier very thick crude then you should not do it otherwise your refinery will get choked up it will have more issues and you will not be able to process so this uh, is very important part then is the economic uh, criteria gross refinery margin and variable operating cost so you have to see you can produce you can process a very nice crude but then your operating cost will increase more okay so you have to je saru crude che e vaparso to bahut saras product marse pan then your operating cost gano increase thase so what you can do is uh, use the thodu kharab crude hoy e use karo use that and then uh, you can sell in the market your products your pro- profit margin will increase so that also can be done now refinery overview how refinery works is basically your feed stock is crude oil then this is a very simple slide huh? it will it becomes more complex when it goes at ground level so from the refinery you are having various processes called distillation cleaning uh cracking reforming and you will get these products namely these are the technical names will go in more uh, this is one more example of uh, how your crude oil is generating the light distillate means lpg petrol middle distillate means kerosene then other uh, diesel and all then heavy ends you will having fuel oil bunker oil and the coke products so this is your uh, basically uh, worldwide petroleum product usage i mean if uh, you are working in refinery you are fine with nafta but if you go outside how it is used lpg everybody knows it is used for commercial and residential purposes okay uh, the nafta is used as a petrochemical fit stock i mean the nafta uh, petrochemical is uh, i will tell you one thing petrochemical is nothing but a part of refinery only uh, you make this uh, polypropylene polyethylene like plastic products polymer products and those things are, are called petrochemicals many refineries are having these units together common only combine only so these are the products where it is used gasoline of course car jet fuel again aviation turbine fuel which is used for aeroplanes then kerosene everybody knows diesel for the transportation and bunker fuels for the shipping industries uh, we are using okay now this is little complex it is still not very complex this is a little complex refinery process flow wherein you have primary units the crude unit and vacuum unit which is uh, doing the initial distillation or initial frac- uh, fractionation of your uh, crude into products then the secondary units are cleaning it more and cracking it more in order to get the lighter products so this is how the refinery looks like Uh, when you have different units uh, connected with each other feed of one unit goes to uh, it's coming from other unit at the same time the product of one unit intermediate unit goes to the last secondary unit wherein it produces the finished product so this is a simple uh, flow of a crude distillation unit this looks very simple but believe me uh, it consists of a lot of equipment in order to balance the mass and heat uh, heat and also there are a lot of kilometers of th- hundreds or thousands of kilometers of piping also involved to transfer the fluid from one equipment to other equipment so the chemical engineers uh, they are they have joined already and they are knowing uh, you have a very big part to play here uh, in order to know how the process is, will work how the uh, chemistry will work and how to get the best production so that is way and the maintenance electrical or mechanical whatever they will be constantly working throughout to uh, enhance the integrity of their respective equipment this is vacuum distillation unit now we will not talk much about these units because you will not uh, be able to uh, understand until and unless you directly work with this one but these are the different units of a refinery this is fluidized catalytic cracking this is hydro cracking unit it again this cracks the product into the small molecules and it generates uh, generates the lighter products so profitable unit this is catalytic reforming you know if you go to the petrol station you will find the petrols of 2 3 different grades 
બધાના અલગ અલગ પૈસા હશે સો એ શું છે ઇટ ઇઝ નથિંગ બટ ઇટ ઇઝ ડિફરન્ટ પેટ્રોલ્સ આર હેવિંગ ડિફરન્ટ ઓક્ટેન બુસ્ટિંગ વિચ ગીવ્સ બુસ્ટ ટુ યોર કાર એન્જિન સો જેમ પૈસા વધારે એમ વધારે બુસ્ટિંગ આપશે સો દેટ ઓક્ટેન બુસ્ટર પ્રોડક્ટ ધ કોલ વિચ ઇઝ કોલ્ડ રિફોર્મ ઇટ ઇઝ જનરેટેડ હિયર ઇન કેટલીક રિફોર્મ Uh, this particular uh, slide i have added uh, because uh, you might have seen many number of time flaring happening maybe hazira ma ne badi jagya joyu hase so why this is done this is done because in the plants there are upsets there are some pressure relief relief done so you have you have to burn it before it goes to the atmosphere and second uh, you have some plants start up or shut down so that's why it is shown there so now uh, we'll see only few of the equipment which is connect, uh, uh, connected with the refine and petrochemicals the heat exchangers which is uh, to exchange heat between two different fluids fin fan cooler also the same purpose column reactors and vessels uh, spheres this is this is basically processing and storage facilities the tanks pump compressor turbines mechanical and field ni andar je loko ne pump compressor turbines ma vadhare ઇન્ટરેસ્ટ પડતો હોય તો તેમના માટે પણ ઇક્વિપમેન્ટ હોય છે દેન મોટર્સ ફોર ઇલેક્ટ્રિકલ એન્જિનિયર્સ મોટર્સ એન્ડ સબસ્ટેશન્સ યાની મોટર્સ આપણે જોઈએ છે ફ્યુ કિલો વોટ્સ મેગા વોટ્સની બટ અહીંયા રિફાઈનરી પેટ્રોકેમિકલ્સની અંદર બીકોઝ ઓફ ધ કેપેસિટી યુ વિલ હેવ સ્ટાર્ટિંગ ફ્રોમ સિક્સ મેગા વોટ્સ ટુ ટ્વેલ્વ મોગા મેગા વોટ્સ આટલી મોટી મોટર પણ હોય છે એન્ડ ઇન્સ્ટ્રુમેન્ટેશન અગેન ઇલેક્ટ્રોનિક્સ એન્ડ કમ્યુનિકેશન આઈ થિંક દેટ ફિલ્ડ ધીઝ ઓલ્સો વેરી ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ દે દેર આર મેની ઓટોમેશન્સ ઇઝ દેર ઇન ધ રિફાઈનરી so this is pictorial uh, view of the kind of equipment the column on the top side uh, the columns are the tall towers uh, inside there are number of trays here the distillation is done like tame jare dudh ne garam karo ane je malai upar tari aave che je halko part che so same phenomena je ene use kariye che ane equipment thodi complex banavi che which is done in column you hit the crude at different temperature levels you will get from the bottom uh, the heavier product diesel gasoline upar jata jata lpg so that is done in uh, column and in heat exchangers you uh, uh, get it cooled and one part will get it heated so heat no exchange thai che this is pressure vessel ye jeni andar flashing thatu hoy che storage thatu ye this is sphere ghani vakat tamne dada shape ma je equipment dekha ye this nothing but sphere you are storing uh, products the uh, gaseous products like lpg with a very high pressure apna ghare pan je cylinder aave che ni andar jo tame fakt gas ne bharo to ema bo ochu volume aavi jase bije divse cylinder finish thai jaye pan tame su karo jo ene vadhare volume store karva mate ene bo ghana pressure thi store kare i think apna ghare je aave che ni andar 14 kg 15 kg jetlu pressure hoy che to e ghana pressure thi store karva mate tamare cylinder ma karo સ્ફિયર માં કરો તો તમે એને સારી રીતે ઘણું વોલ્યુમ કરી શકો અને એની જે થિકનેસ લેવી પડે ઇક્વિપમેન્ટની એ ઓછું થઈ જાય છે એટલા માટે એલપીજી જે હોય છે એ સ્ફિયરની અંદર યુઝ કરીએ છીએ ધીસ ઇઝ વન થિંગ પ્રેશર સેફ્ટી વાલ આપણે ઘરની અંદર કિચનમાં જે સિટી વાગે છે કુકરની ઉપર સો ધીસ ઇઝ ધ સેમ ઇક્વિપમેન્ટ બટ ધીસ ઇઝ વેરી ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ રિફાઈનરી ઇફ ધીસ ડઝન્ટ વર્ક આ જો કામ ના કરે રિફાઈનરીમાં તો ધેર મે બી બિગ હેઝાર્સ ઓકે સો ચેલેન્જીસ પાર્ટમાં આપણે ક્વિકલી જઈશું તો હેલ્થ સેફ્ટી અને એન્વાયરમેન્ટ ચેલેન્જીસ છે રિફાઈનરીમાં કામ કરવા માટે બીકોઝ ટોક્સિક એન્વાયરમેન્ટ છે ટોક્સિક ગેસ રિલીઝ થાય છે એનાથી આપણે બચવાનું હોય છે દેન કન્ફાઇન્ડ સ્પેસ એવા સ્પેસ કે વેર વેર દેર ઇઝ નો કન્ટિન્યુઅસ ઓક્યુપેન્સી પણ આપણે કામ કરવા માટે અંદર જવું પડે જ્યાં ઓક્સિજન ઓછું હોય જ્યાં ક્યારેક નાઇટ્રોજન આવી શકે એવી સંભાવના હોય સો દેટ ઇઝ કોલ કન્ફાઇન્ડ સ્પેસ વર્ક એટ હાઇટ ઘણી વખત આપણે સિટીની અંદર બિલ્ડિંગ બનતી હોય ત્યારે જોયું છે કે એક લાકડાનો માછડો બનાવ્યો છે દેટ ઇઝ કોલ્ડ સ્કેફોલ્ડિંગ એની વે ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીની અંદર એ વધારે પ્રોફેશનલ બનાવ્યો વધારે સેફ બનાવ્યો હોય છે પણ ડઝન ધ યુ નો લીવ ઇટ લીવ અસ ફ્રોમ યુ નો હેઝાર્ડ ઓફ ફોલિંગ ફ્રોમ હાઇટ તો એ પણ એક હેઝાર્ડ છે દેન વર્કિંગ ઇન એક્સ્ટ્રીમ ટેમ્પરેચર એન્ડ પ્રેશર્સ ઘણા ઘણા પ્રેશર હોય છે જે પ્લાનમાં હું કામ કરું છું ત્યાં વર્કિંગ પ્રેશર સમવેર અરાઉન્ડ વન સિક્સટી કેજી પર સીએમ સ્ક્વેર તો કંઈ લાઈન લીક થાય કંઈ પણ પ્રોબ્લેમ થાય તો ઇટ મે ક્રિએટ ટ્રુમેન્ડસ ઓર યુ કેન સે ટ્રુમેન્ડસ રિસ્ક સો દેટ ઇઝ ધેર દેન કન્ફાઇન્ડ એન્ડ કન્ફાઇન્ડ એન્વાયરમેન્ટલ રિલીઝીઝ આપણે બધું જે એન્વાયરમેન્ટલ રિલીઝ હોય છે એને પણ કંટ્રોલમાં રાખવાનું હોય છે તમારી ફ્લેર સળગવી જોઈએ એ બંધ થઈ જાય તો પણ પ્રોબ્લેમ છે દેન દેર આર ફેલિયર્સ વેર ઇન પીપલ આર ગેટિંગ ડાયટ દેર આર પ્રોપર્ટી ડેમેજ લોસ ઓફ બિઝનેસ આપણે આવતી સ્લાઇડમાં જોઈશું એન્ડ દેર આર બિઝનેસ ચેલેન્જીસ લાઇક ધીઝ વોલાટીલ માર્કેટ કેવી રીતે રિફાઈનરી ચલાવવી સો દેટ યુ વિલ હેવ સફિશિયન્ટ પ્રોફિટ માર્જિન 
then uh, reduce capital expenditure and operating expenditure matlab je refinery chalavano roz no je kharcho che ene kevi rite ghatadvo je amna corona na case mpo e thayo che emne bahut dhyan rakhvu pade refinery chalavti vakte je additional man power hoy to ene ocho karvo pade bija gana costing ghatadva pade so quickly apne challenges part ma uh, case study ma jaisu so case study pehli je che that is from chevron richmond refinery tame jamni baju image joi sako fakt ek 8 inch no pipe ruptured thayo je and it has created a fire this is this happened in 2012 the bottom image on the right hand side you can see the first image is starting image wherein white color cloud is just forming second white and black third one the black hedge uh, emerged more and the fourth one is the black hedge emerged more and more so this this was a huge fire has happened in 2012 and 18 people got died huge property loss so much of lawsuit because of course it has happened in us so uh, lawsuit and penalty environmental penalty some 15000 people suffered medical treatment case because they complained of the breathing issues why it has happened because of sulfuric corrosion this was not done we have video so we'll see in detail in that that one so, uh, study 2 is a uh, storage tank farm fire wherein the tank got uh, tank caught fire no 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 death luckily but many people got injured and millions of uh, dollars or you can say britain pounds were uh, uh, you know lost and uh, this uh, sometimes you see the fire is there at one place but the people are you know uh, putting water in the nearby tanks so why this because the the place where fire has already taken place you cannot control that because of the amount of hydrocarbon but you have to take care of the others which are nearby you have to keep them cool otherwise if they also start burning then there will be a series of burning so that should not happen similarly the uh, other refinery uh, which is having this failure of that tank this is again uh, in the picture it looks small but it is very big so this is again the same kind of failure but the uh, fluid released was h2so4 which is uh, acid and it has created a lot of aquatic issues this is again a tank farm burning in a caribbean petroleum tank terminal uh, by seeing this image you might have uh, remember something the in famous jaipur jaipur uh, tank farm fire which has occurred in in our own india so this has occurred here in this case because of the overfill prevention and this is the final case study wherein the heat exchanger you can see the paper thinning you can see the paper thinning of the equipment but this is actually a metal of uh, so much of thickness it has failed and it is a heat exchanger failure so you can see this is the heat exchanger how it looks like actually and millions of dollars were lost in this so uh, i'll just touch on my part which i am doing i am involved with this is inspection so what we do is basically we determine the condition of the equipment and we de determine the rate of the uh, damages that is happening and then we advise uh, what repairs has to be done and what monitoring uh, has to be continued so that we will prevent the incidents and at the same time we will increase the life cycle uh, second thing there are some statutory requirements in some of the companies so that has to be also be followed these are few of the codes and standards which gives the guidelines with respect to uh, how to do inspection what to do inspection when to do inspection and where to do inspection so we have to follow it is it becomes a legal requirement and this is uh, one aspect of the inspection which is a visual inspection so right hand side uh, picture you can see how it shows that how to uh, do the inspection at uh, from which how how much distance at what angle you should do and the left hand side image shows an inspection with the tool which is doing the weld size inspection and this is a few non destructive testing we are doing for the components uh, this is done in the fabrication like if you know lnt hazira where they are doing the fabrication at that time also they do and during in service equipment also we do so die penetrant test the magnetic particle test and radiography test if you know x ray test which is being done in the medical so this is the same case only difference is is the source of the inspection and uh, what you do inspection uh, the substrate are different uh, this is again ultrasonic test uh, sometimes we call it sonography by the right hand side image if you see you are familiar with that so this is again for the metal uh, internal the soundness of the metal to check those things we use this tech, uh, te uh, technologies uh, 
for uh, people who are willing to you know work under the uh, this refinery and oil and gas so i have uh, noted down hum, here some of the professional certificates uh, like asnt level 2 the american petroleum institute api which we do frequently uh, which is having courses courses are not mandatory if you have gained sufficient knowledge uh, you can do that but the exams are tough so you are able to read a lot of quotes and exams are done at some few dedicated centers which is uh, the on computer electronic exams and our nearest uh, if we talk it is nearest is mumbai the national association of corrosion Eng Eng engineers nes so this is also something done at some dedicated centers and american welding society because in the refineries and petrochemicals a uh, lot of welding is done and for those welding how to do welding how to do inspection of these buildings also very vital so there are certifications for this one also uh, so we'll talk about now opportunities uh, as far as i know all the students are uh, here uh, gathered here so career wise opportunities only we'll see so who all streams can work in a refined and petrochemical so chemical is the owner we can say they are the people who are pioneering the process so chemical engineers mechanical metallurgical engineers uh, metallurgy i think we don't have in our college so other colleges whoever have metallurgy also important electrical instrumentation civil streams then there are uh, you can pursue your uh, career as designers in the field of mechanical chemical and electricals and some people if they want to go further and uh, they want to work as a white collar job then people can pursue mba uh, which will help them in uh, overall refinery economics marketing and trading so that's uh, that was all but before finishing uh, the very interesting part let me share with you is the animation videos uh, two videos we have will quickly go through these videos the Chevron Richmond Refinery, California's Contra, and primarily makes transportation fuels, such as gasoline and diesel, as well as lube oils. The refinery can process inside the tower, the crude unit, where crude oil is cleaned and heated before entering the distillation tower. Inside the tower, the crude oil is boiled. The vapor then condenses into various liquid hydrocarbon fractions, or streams, including jet fuel, diesel, and gas oil. The different streams exit the distillation tower through separate pipes or side cuts. 2012, the crude unit was operating normally. Around 3.50 that afternoon, an operator was performing a routine check when he noticed a small puddle on the ground Spark near the chemical, distillation tower. Uh, diploma, ITI, the liquid diploma. appeared to be dripping from an 8-inch insulated pipe 14 feet overhead. The leaking pipe was a section of the tower's number four side cut line, degrees Fahrenheit, and contained light gas oil, a combustible liquid similar to diesel fuel. Chevron inspectors knew that over the years, the walls of the number four side cut had thinned due to corrosion, but they did not realize how close this particular segment was to failure. As for responding to hazardous leaks, Refinery firefighters were sent to the scene. A number of managers, engineers, and technicians gathered there informally to assess the problem. Using a pike pole to hook and pull away the leaking pipe. Two firefighters then used a hook to remove the insulation from the pipe. As they were working, hydrocarbon vapor began to flow out from underneath the insulation. The two firefighters backed away from the growing vapor cloud. As the hot vapor mixed with air, it ignited. That fire was quickly put out, and the two firefighters immediately climbed down off the scaffolding. But the exact location of the leak was still obscured by the remaining insulation and firefighting water. So the Chevron firefighters attempted to strip the insulation off the pipe with high-pressure water but the leak suddenly worsened and hot hydrocarbon liquid started to spray out of the pipe. A decision was finally made to begin an emergency shutdown of the crude unit, but it was too late. Suddenly the pipe ripped open. A vapor cloud formed and rapidly expanded as the large inventory of hydrocarbons in the distillation tower started to vent through the ruptured pipe. 
The vapor cloud immediately spread over hundreds of feet, engulfing all 19 <clears throat> people who had gathered nearby. The firefighters and operators struggled to escape through the dense hydrocarbon cloud, unable to... Mayday! This is 460! But when he received no response, he assumed everyone else was dead. To escape the inferno, he fled through what witnesses described as a wall of fire. Fortunately, all the workers would eventually flee to safety, away from the refinery. The fire continued burning for hours. Over the succeeding days, more than 15,000 people sought medical treatment at nearby hospitals for breathing problems and other symptoms. During its investigation, the CSB determined that the carbon steel pipe installed in 1976 had thinned to the point of failure from an effect known as sulfidation corrosion. Carbon steel piping is particularly susceptible to this type of corrosion, which occurs over time when the steel is exposed to sulfur-containing hydrocarbons at high temperatures. Steel piping that happens to be low in the element silicon corrodes especially quickly. The CSB learned that sulfidation corrosion in the section of pipe examined some, but not all, locations along the number four side cut and found significant thinning. Some sections so this is one uh, second apade uh, joisu second case study it's also interesting Ryan and Cortez Washington a nearly 40 year old heat exchanger violently ruptures causing an explosion and fire the exchanger catastrophic and determined that the heat exchanger catastrophically failed due to long term damage from what is known as high temperature hydrogen attack the Tesoro Refinery in Anacortes is an 800-acre facility located approximately 70 miles northwest of Seattle. The refinery produces a variety of products, including called heat exchangers. The unit contains two banks of three heat exchangers supported by a three-level steel Very structure. Nice animation, huh? Each heat exchanger consists of a bundle of tubes inside a steel shell. Hot fluid exiting the reactor flows through the heat exchanger shell while cool fluid headed for the reactor flows inside the tubes. Heat is exchanged through the walls of the tubes. Every six months, the heat exchangers are taken offline to be cleaned because of fouling, a common occurrence when operating heat exchangers in this type of service. As the raw naphtha is heated, a scale-like material forms and deposits onto the inside of the tubes, hindering the transfer of heat in the exchangers. Service startup of the offline and one personnel had by 10 30 the heat exchanger of the middle vessels in this occurs then react with carbon in the steel to form methane gas the larger methane molecules unable to diffuse out of the steel accumulate stressing the steel and over time causing fissures in both of the middle heat exchangers the fissures grew and connected to form large internal cracks one such crack was 48 inches long and extended more than one third of the way through the vessel's one inch thick shell. Shortly after midnight, the temperature of the fluid exiting the tubes of the online bank of exchangers increased about 75 degrees over the span of three minutes, a temperature increase that was typical and observed in previous startups. But the middle heat exchanger was so severely weakened from high temperature hydrogen attack that it likely could not withstand the stress caused by the rapid temperature increase. At 12.35 a.m., employees working at a nearby process unit heard a loud hissing noise when vapor began to leak as the heat exchanger cracked at its weakest point. Seconds later, the exchanger violently ruptured. Hot hydrogen and naphtha vapor rapidly vented. Three of the other four operators were transported to local burn centers with severe injuries. Two Okay, so that's it. I think our uh, time is running up. And with that, I will finish with one note. Uh, refinery petrochemical, there are a lot of opportunities, but then there are a lot of challenges. If you are working as a professional, uh, you have to have a thorough knowledge of not only your stream, but everything. Like if I am a mechanical engineer, I have to know about the chemical, the process part also. So there, is a, there will always be a teamwork which will work. 
આઈ વિલ સજેસ્ટ કે હમણાં પણ તમે લોકો સ્ટડી કરો છો તો તમારા ફ્રેન્ડ્સ હોય જે બીજી બધી સ્ટ્રીમમાં યુ શુડ શેર યોર સ્ટ્રીમ્સ નોલેજ વિથ ઇચ અદર સો ટુગેધર એઝ અ ટીમ વર્ક વી કેન ગો સો દેટ ઇઝ ઓનલી ફ્રોમ માય સાઈડ આઈ થિંક મોડરેટર કેન ટેક કંટ્રોલ ઓફ ધીસ નાઉ ટેકનિકલ પ્રોબ્લેમ સો વી હેવ નોટ ગિવન ધ ઇન્ટ્રોડક્શન સો મિસ્ટર વિશાલ પ્રજાપતિ બેઝિકલી હેઝ કમ્પ્લીટેડ હિઝ બી ફ્રોમ એસ એન આઈ ટી સુરત in 2005 uh, then he has a uh, total experience of 14 years in uh, refinery and petrochemical industries uh, uh, he has worked for 7 years in relays industries jamnagar uh, as a inspection engineer after that uh, he joined uh, adnoc that is abu dhabi national oil corporation uae and from last 7 uh, years he is working there as a senior inspection engineer uh, he has also completed various certification uh, certification courses from american petroleum institute and uh, uh, actually this is time of lockdown uh, in uh, abu dhabi also but still has too much work uh, that is work from home uh, still he has uh, given time for us for our, for our students uh, so thank you vishal thank you very much for uh, given your precious time for us okay hello okay thank you okay thank you thank you vishal okay so now uh, here we end up this uh, session hope this session uh, will be helpful for all the students as uh, uh, vishal has uh, uh, said to us that uh, uh, this particular industry has uh, uh, working work power or uh, main power of different branches like mechanical chemical electrical Uh, instrument so all the students uh, can take uh, advantage of uh, their branch and if they want to work uh, they can prepare themselves according to whatever the thing uh, said by vishal okay so thank you again uh, thank you from all rngpit uh, rngpit family so oh, thank you okay thank you everybody Thanks. okay thank you everybody stay, stay home stay safe stay home